Hi, this is Ian Stewart from Floatad Mastering. And in this video, I'd like to show you some of the new mastering and quality assurance features in WaveLab 12. First off, we have a new track type. You'll see it grouped next to reference tracks when you click the add track button. And it is a null test track. As the name suggests, it's primarily intended for null testing, which if you're not familiar with the term is a procedure to audibly isolate the differences between two files or tracks. This can be really useful during QC to ensure that your rendered output does in fact match the processing that's happening during real time playback, or perhaps if you're trying to isolate and verify the differences between two mix versions. To help accomplish this, null test tracks have some unique properties. First, the polarity is automatically inverted, which is kind of one of the two most fundamental properties of null testing, the other being sample level time alignment, and we do have a few new tools to help with that, more on that in a minute. And then, much like a reference track, the track bypasses the montage and master section output processing while also being latency compensated to them. Aside from the polarity inversion, there are also a few other key differences from reference tracks. First, the track doesn't need to be soloed in order to hear it. In fact, it's just the opposite. By default, it's mixed with the rest of the montage output. If things are nulling properly, you will hear silence. Because of this, null test tracks can be included in subsequent renders, so they open up some new options for testing and verifying results. One of the new features that makes using null test tracks easier is a redesigned clip alignment tool, which you'll find in the clip function menu. It uses audio correlation to precisely time align two clips. So to use this, all you have to do is get the two clips somewhere close to aligned, select the range under which the alignment will occur in the source clip, and then activate the clip that you want to move. Then just click on the align clips button select audio correlation and click apply. WaveLab will take a few seconds to analyze the audio and then move the active clip. And here, if we zoom out and go back to exactly where the clip was rendered from, we can see that it's bang on down to the sample. Next up, a five-way output filter has been added for quick and easy frequency band monitoring. You can find these filters at the bottom of the inspector and no matter which effects tab you're on, they're always available. They're also applied to all track types, except null test tracks, but including reference tracks, and work in conjunction with loudness matching. More on that in the loudest management video. So when you put this all together, you have a really powerful way to monitor and A-B individual frequency ranges to make sure you're achieving exactly what you intend. If you'd like to customize the filter frequencies and slopes, you can quickly access those settings by clicking here, which will bring you to the audio montage preferences page. Then you can adjust all of your filter parameters in the monitoring filter section. We also have a really nice and long request improvement to the speaker configurations in the master section. There's now an option to bind any playback processing plugins to each of the eight speaker configurations. Personally, I love to use this for some headphone processing plugins on my headphone output, but it could also be used, for example, for different monitor outputs uh, that each need their own room correction or voicing curve. So now, rather than switching speaker configurations, then changing the plugin bypass states or recalling a partial master section preset, you can change all of that in a single click. To bind a set of plugins with a speaker configuration, you just click on this new button and select bind with current playback plugins. Along similar lines, there's been a major enhancement to plugin handling across multiple clips in a montage. To set the stage here a little, let's imagine we're working on a master and we have things really close for a given song, but we realize the choruses could use a little extra compression and perhaps as a result, a slightly different EQ setting. A common way to do this would be to split the clip into multiple sections and apply different processing to each section. Then you'd have to copy your new chorus processing to all the additional chorus clips. And while this has gotten easier in recent versions, it has now been highly streamlined in WaveLab 12. All you have to do is click this replicate settings button on the plugin you want to update, and then select the clips you want the update to be applied to. To make this easier, the timeline location of the clip is shown. And additionally, when you select a clip, it's highlighted on the timeline. Then press replicate and you're all set. 
Later, if you decide you need to modify things further, WaveLab will remember any selected clips, tracks, or output slots that are associated with the selected plugin, making the setting replication process even faster. There have also been some updates to the CD wizard, which has been renamed to the album wizard, a bit more appropriate in this day and age, to enhance both ISRC generation and marker placement. For ISRCs, you can now choose whether the codes are incremented by a value of one or 10 using this dropdown. And that can be useful for certain labels that use the final digit to designate alternate track versions and the second to last digit for subsequent tracks on release. For title marker placement, previously called CD track markers, an option has been added to maintain the clip positions and adjust the marker positions around them. Whereas in the past, either the markers would be placed exactly on the clip boundaries and you would have to add offsets as a secondary step, or you could specify offsets, but the clips would be moved to create them. Instead, now you can select adjust marker positions and specify the offset from the clip boundaries with additional overrides for the first and final markers. So all told, this can save you a few steps and some time when you're establishing the final spacing and timing of your projects. And lastly, we have six new plugins included. Sample Align is a stereo or mid-side sample delay plugin with independent delay per channel. And it can be useful during null tests to ensure precise time alignment uh, for azimuth correction of tape capture or for rebalancing the image of a stereo source amongst other applications. Black Valve is a new compressor based on a classic tube design with a simplified interface and it's very program dependent and adaptive. The tube drive and post tube gain parameters are both loudness compensated, so you can alter the gain staging into the compression circuit without changing the overall loudness. And it also includes a built-in wet dry blend for parallel compression setups. Vox Comp is a compressor tailored to vocal processing and as such can be great for YouTube videos, podcasts, or anywhere you need to dial in a dynamic vocal recording. Like Black Valve, it's very program adaptive and also includes a wet dry blend and has really been designed to get good vocal results quickly and easily. Razor is a new limiter plugin that can be used everywhere from individual stems to the full montage out or master section and has some unique release timing controls that allow you to specify manual auto or auto with minimum or maximum release times, plus a very fast aggressive setting. And finally, we have two classic tube EQs, the EQ P1A and EQ M5. These probably need no introduction. Suffice to say, they can be great in mastering for broad strokes, tonal adjustments, with a splash of that kind of tube vibe. Of course, the EQ P1A is geared towards low and high shelving with that classic adaptive Q high bell. Uh, while the EQ M5 provides two boost and one cut mid-range bell filters. So, those are the new mastering and quality assurance features in WaveLab 12. If this was helpful, we'd love it if you gave the video a like, and certainly take a look at the manual for more detail on all of these. We're just scratching the surface on a lot of them. Also, if you head on over to the WaveLab channel, we've got more videos on other new features in WaveLab 12, plus tutorials, the Pro Workflows livestream series with Justin Perkins, and all sorts of other good content for you to check out. So go ahead and subscribe or ring the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.